It's a playoff Tuesday from Bengals Stadium. Section 7, 3A, girls soccer first round action. The 5-4 matchup, the Anoka, the 6-3 matchup, excuse me, the Anoka Tornadoes and the Blaine Bengals. J.W. Cox alongside Blythe Whaley. And Blythe should be a fun one. We love watching the Bengals. We love watching number 10 and what she can do. Last time they played Anoka, she scored four goals. Offensively, that's where it obviously starts with the Bengals. Yeah, of course. And definitely something that they're taking note of as well. Coach Zachman was telling me before the game that you know, everyone is going to be having eyes on Kendall Stadden throughout this section playoff. So they're going to have to look for who is going to step up. And they've been working on that in practice of who's going to help contribute in the offense. The thing that's got to have Coach Zachman happy, too, is the way they've played defense as well. Because it hasn't just been 10 scoring the ball. They've been able to shut down opponents. 15 of their, 10 of their 15 games have involved a shutout one way or another. 10 of those have been, or excuse me, 7 of those have been Bengals shutting out opponents. This defense comes to play. And as you know, that's going to win this time of year. Yeah, of course, you got to make sure that you're having both sides of the game. And this Bengal team, they've really hit the ground running here late in the season. And that's exactly what Coach Sackman also was telling me is that he doesn't want to change anything. What's working is working. Let's just play soccer, not overcomplicate it, and do what they have been doing best here these last few games. 10 of their last 12 games have been wins. They're 10, 1, and 1. Six of those have been shutout victories. Get some goals, get a couple, and the defense can go to work. Facing Anoka, this has been a pretty common postseason matchup between these two teams. Four straight times after Anoka won the section title in 2014, they would lose to the Bengals in the postseason four straight years following that. That's the last section title for Anoka back in 2014, what they're trying to chase down. And, of course, the Bengals last took home the section title in 2018. It's an exciting time of year, Blythe. we got two games we'll do here, girls, girls game first, boys game second against Andover. Just a fun time of year to get these playoffs started. Feels nice this year to just have some normalcy out on the turf and get to go play some soccer. Yeah, down there on the field, it just you feel the intensity. Of course, playoffs, it's do or die. This could be your last game and wanting to make sure that you give it your all out there and you see these ladies you know, getting loose, getting warmed up and ready because it is it is a fun time, even Last. though there's that that little of a of a worry, you know, yeah, you've just got you don't that want pressure. to be at the end. <laughs> Definitely. Last time they met a little less pressure back on September the eighteenth. Five three Bengals got the win. It was a tight game in the first half, two two after one half of play, and then Bengals scored three goals in the second to win that. Tess Inlow will be in goal for the Bengals, and we've gotten to watch her over the years at that back end, and, and you've got that that great defense. Or is it Madison Way? I'm sorry. I thought he had introduced Tess Inlow. So Madison Way, too, I mean, she has been just as good. You look at the 95% save percentage for her, .47 on the goals against average. I mean, either one of those you throw back there, you know, with that defense, whatever they're doing out in front, they're going to find a way to get a stop at the back end of the net. Yeah, definitely. And I believe Tess Enlow is out with a concussion. So she probably was supposed to start. That could be why maybe if they did announce that. But um, as far as I know, Madison Way is going to be stepping up for the Bengals here tonight because of that. So the Bengals looking to take a run through the postseason. And it starts here in this 3-6 matchup. The rest of the bracket here at 7-3-A, the 2-7 matchup, Andover and Forest Lake, the two-seed Duluth East and Coon Rapids, that's the 4-5 matchup. That one going on already here starting at 5 o'clock at Duluth East. Centennial is the one seed they are hosting. As you see the brackets, Centennial and Cambridge, Isanti, that's also the 5 o'clock game, 4 o'clock, so they're well underway there at Andover today. And hopefully we're, we're going to get a look at that Centennial team too, Blythe, later on in these playoffs as they continue to win their way through. Just another great year for them coming in to the postseason ranked number two in Class 3A. Yeah, of course, fun to watch them throughout the years play soccer, always bringing up, bringing on the show as they put so many goals in. But, of course, this year, too, with just having that new coaching head or head coach for them, that's been something to note as they've transitioned very well, of course. It'll be Bengals and Tornadoes. And when we come back, we'll kick this one off, the first game of the 7-3A playoffs for us. The number three-seeded Bengals at 11-4-1, taking on the number six-seeded Tornadoes at 4-11. and Back with playoff soccer after this on North Metro TV.
Ready to roll from Bengals Stadium with high school girls soccer playoff action. J.W. Blythe, our entire North Metro TV crew. I'm glad to get this one rolling. Bengals, they'll be in that traditional Columbia blue. And we did get the clarification. It is Tess Inlow in net. Back for the Bengals as an Oakville attack left to right following the kickoff. So all good there. And these Anoka Tornadoes coming in, averaging just over a goal per game on the season, allowing just over two goals per game on the season. Bengals will try and take advantage of that Blythe, certainly, as they have to work it down to their own end for the first time here early on in this one, just 30 seconds after kickoff. And I think it's tough coming off a game. They just did win 9-0, to zero, and sometimes in games when it's like that, it's tough to bring that intensity back up. And, of course, today matters just that much more. Well, the magic of TV didn't make it seem like it was very long, but we came up expecting to get this game underway right away. So to your point of getting that yeah. intensity back, had to wait for an official. So the teams had a little extra 7 to 12 minutes or so of kicking around and stretching out, and now they are rolling. Yeah, we saw in the regular season they had just two refs for a lot of it due to COVID, some refing shortages. But of course, it's the playoffs. They want to make sure they get these calls right because it's so important for which team is moving forward. I didn't actually see that in the regular season. You were telling me about how that worked. That just has to be absolutely difficult for a, in this sport in particular yeah. <laughs> to have two officials just considering what the, what the responsibilities are there. So kudos to those who did that throughout the year. And kudos to Ellie Nian who takes it through the defense for an oak, a real first opportunity in the attacking end for the Bengals, wheeled around the outside by Avery Soley. Her cross is picked up and taken out of the air by Caroline Huff, the junior goalkeeper, and she'll walk it away. But a good push by this Bengal offense, averaging just over two goals per contest. Yeah, making sure that you're up to speed right away. You see that goalkeeper coming out and making the stop, and that's huge just to make sure you're mentally in it as well. Bengals, of course, well used to playing on this turf now, but the First year for them on this. It's sent by Nian again down the field. She's looking for Soli, trying to attack on that right edge. They've got Kendall Stad on the opposite side. And Jordan Pascarella in the middle. Pascarella and Stadden. That's amounted to much of the offense. Combining on 22 of the 36 goals, Stadden has it right now. As it's picked away by Anoka. Good defense, tough to do against her. Ella Hennis, the junior defender, got it that time. And that's what they're ready for. They're prepared that this is going to possibly happen a lot more than it did in the regular season to Staten as we get further in this section playoff. And not just the responsibility of one tornado at this point, right? They're going to have to bring different waves depending on, you know, kind of an elaborate zone wherever she goes on the field. It's got to be the number one assignment. To make sure you've marked her as that one's knocked away. Be a Noka ball. But something that I really like too is just looking at the stats for Staden between this year and last year, just a lot more assists as well. And so you're seeing how she's gotten even more acquainted to assisting. And as we get further in this tournament, we'll probably be seeing more of that too. It's got to be something that happens. They will pay attention because if you don't pay attention enough to Kendall Staden, she'll just flat out beat you. But if you do, she's found the ability to distribute as well. Knocked out. Pascarella trying to weave her way up the field. Hennis all over the place so far defensively for the Tornadoes. 3-10 and ten in Northwest Suburban Conference play for Anoka. That was good for an 11th place finish. Bengals finished in the top four. Closed the season strong after their initial three losses. They clear it out here, keeping in low clean, and they do. Pressure then. Bounced right back down from the midfield by Veronica Moran. Just a sophomore. Flew in there to keep that pressure on. In the middle, Allison Hookham. Gonna find her way to that ball. Bengals able to take it away. Speedy work right through the middle of the field by Nian. Up the near side, that's Pascarella. Bump to the deck. Roll it out of bounds, so just to throw in, nothing on the bump. We've seen her have some good time this year compared to last year coming back from that injury and definitely has had an impact, like you said, in the attack. Olivia Goddard took the worst of a collision there, allows the Bengals to hang on to it. 
Pascarella working back out to find space. Feed that one all the way back towards the middle. Dangles a little miscommunication there, but able to hang on to it through the reverse from Francesca Kratichville. Yeah, great decision to switch the field, making sure that they can spread out the defense. Along that sideline, it's going to go back to Anoka. Just slips past Avery Soli there. Something that the Tornadoes have been able to do tonight is just get the ball in the attack and allowing the defense to get a break. Sometimes I think the teams that have played against this Bengal team, they've had to have their defense work way more than they needed to and wore them down. And, of course, that's when goals happen. And I think this Tornado team in the early minutes at least has been able to have the ball in the middle, if not in their attacking end for some time to relieve. Stadden against three defenders trying to feed it to the middle for Pascarella. That one's cut off by Hennis. And a whistle is going to stop us here and bring it back to the Tornadoes. A little too aggressive there for Pascarella trying to cut back into that. Good positioning there for Hennis defensively the whole way through between the ball and Pascarella. But you're right, this Bengal team wants to try and be relentless. Something that they've learned from their rivals, too. That's how Centennial does it, scoring their all those goals. Keep the pressure on. Even a 30-second to 45-second breather for this defense where they don't have to be on edge. Can pay dividends. Stadden around a slipping defender. Check that. That was Tessa Zachman. She's only about half a foot shorter yeah. than Kendall Stadden. That's all right. We'll figure it out, both with the pink shoes and the pink headband. Blonde, too. Add that to the, to the numbers. <laughs> Things that they do have similarities. Try and keep that straight, though. Stadden out of the corner. Zachman knocks it down. Making a move, feeding it to Stadden. Stadden takes that shot and scores. Seven minutes in, Kendall Stadden gets one for the Bengals and puts them on the board. And holy cow, Stadden, just incredible stats. You look at it, 29 shots on goal, and she's, and she's only had 37 shots in general. So almost all of them on goal, and 25 she made. And of course, now adding to her total, 26 on the season, and she made that look so easy. Good pass between a couple defenders, but there was still a defender between Stadden and the net. She was able to turn and fire her 16th of the year. It's a Kendall Stadden goal that gets the Bengals on top. We talked about the pressure that there is in the postseason. How big is that then to see that first goal? And now you know, okay, we're, we're a team that can play some defense. That could be enough. We want to get more, but that one goal now goes through and we're playing our game. And as you've talked about the defense doing a good job of getting a lot of shutouts this season, so it also helps with that breather as well to be like, we're up by a goal. Now, hey, if we can hold it even, we've still won this game. Caitlin Dennis, her throw in. Intercepted, takes Moran's effort to push it back across midfield. So right at the seven-minute mark of this game, Kendall Stadden puts the Bengals on the board. Assist from... Tessa Zachman, her third of the year. Anoka looking for that possession. Bounces back towards Pascarella. Zachman in the middle. Feeding towards space. First one there. And Anoka Tornado to knock it away. Looks like Lauren Youngquist. Right back down the right side, slips its way out to Soli. Stadden makes a move, leaves three defenders behind, left-footed try, and this time Caroline Huff makes the stop. I like that she got it into the box. She's trying to put it on net, doesn't want to settle for just this one-goal lead. But at that point, it looked like it wasn't building as much as it could have. Maybe try to find someone else in the box there. That could have been one of those times where she laid that one off. Settle down. You might draw another defender to her. She already had three behind her towards the corner. Anoka throw in. 
<laughs> That's exactly what they were trying to do, you know, just have everyone flooded towards Staden and feel good about shutting that one down, and they definitely did that. But that is something that Coach Dragon for the Sonoka team wanted to make sure that they did was to shut down Staden. Of course, that happening now early in this first half, how does your team recover and mentally say, okay, we're just not going to let that happen again? Yes, she scored one, but we're just going to stop it from here on out. As we said, there were defenders in place, too, on that goal. Yeah. So it wasn't a complete miss. It was just a great effort to get that shot off accurately for Kendall Stad. Out of bounds. Anoka ball. Tossed in by the senior, Hadley Dammer. Not an overly experienced Anoka team. Last year won five games in the shortened season. Lost in the second round to Centennial. Pascarella out in front of the pack. Shot stopped by Huff. Tough play to make. Pascarella pulled the trigger and Huff makes another good stop. And it always looks good when Pascarella is having the ball with room and space to run. She typically does quite well in those fast break opportunities. Avery Soli collides with an Anoka Tornado player. That's Callie Harris, who is down. Two players coming to the same spot at the same time. It is Anoka ball. Harris pops up okay. Toughness on display for the junior. 17 of the 24 on the roster are juniors, sophomores, or freshmen. Just seven seniors for Anoka. And of course, with it being playoffs, you don't want to have to step off the field. That's another reason why you're going to see these ladies trying that much harder to stay in the game no matter what happens to them. Anoka has a sub ready to go as Stad tries to tap that one up to Pascarella. Pennis cuts her off, turns it into a loose ball. Back into the fray comes Hughes. Trickles to Staden. Trying to find space and maybe get it to Zachman in the middle. It's intercepted and taken away. I like that pressure, though, by Anoka. Stepping up on Staden immediately and really making it difficult. Pascarella trying to feed it to herself. A little bit too strong off that right foot. Defender got in on it. Poked out off the Bengals. Good work defensively by Emma Olsen there. Was that her both times, I feel like? So you're seeing what that decision can be. If you decide right away to step up, making these attackers have to really already have a plan, what are they doing next with the ball? And we see both of those Bengals not really having that second plan yet. Anoka is forcing the Bengals to be extra fine on the offensive end. It's worked out for them with the one goal. Deep down towards space, Tassinlo Rolls over there, 14 goals allowed for her across 11 games, all those shutouts piling up, certainly. Less than two goals allowed per game under goals against average. 81% on the save percentage, not having to make a save there. Sonoka just tried to force it down, just outside of 27 minutes to go here in this first half. Both teams waiting on some substitutions next opportunity. Allison Hookham. Sends it down deep along that far side, but too deep. Claire Moran to track down. And I would think the Tornadoes would still consider this first half a win if they do come away with just this 1-0 deficit. So for them trying to stick this one out, of course, trying to make that goal happen on their attacking half. But even if they don't, how can they just continue to stop the Bengals as they get into those positions? Abby Newby checks in for the Blaine Bengals. Amber Hansen also in on the other side for Anoka. Offsides whistle. Bengals have that speed, though, Blythe. They're going to try when they get that opportunity, whether it's that time Newby. I've already seen it from Pascarella. A little too much that time. And you really can push that envelope now. Being up by a goal, what, what's there to lose? And you're just going to try to add to that with, if it, with it if it works out, if you did keep on sides. Caitlin Dennis 
so excuse me, Avery Danner was the other player that checked in for Anoka. Trying to feed it through Harris on that left side. Turned away by the Bengals, four defenders. Ready and waiting back there, Peyton Padilla. Able to knock it back, goes to her again. Smooth ball upfield, but sent right back where it came. Padilla working over there with Molly Clausen to try and knock it down. Clausen sends it upfield. Nian to the far side, solely tap back to Nian in the middle. To its destination, and that's Staden down deep, a throw in deep coming up for the Bengals, just under 25 minutes to go here in this first half. First round, Section 7, 3A section tournament. Bengals trying to get to the top of this heat for the first time since 2018. It's deemed a throw in deep close to the flag down there. Seven times, though, the Bengals have been section champs. So of course, you don't want it to be your senior year when it happens that it isn't. So they're going to be working that much harder to try to make sure that it continues to be that way. Long shot, watched by Huff. Craddageville sent it with the right foot in towards the net. And yeah, they've lost in the semifinals and the finals the last two years. Both of those, of course, at the hands of Centennial, who would be looming for anyone in this section, you would think. The Bengals would love another crack at that. And so would we, both of our Absolutely. teams going at each other. <laughs> it's always a nice time. Let's get it on the boys' side, too. We've had that before. Speaks to the success of all the programs we cover in soccer. Looked at Spring Lake Park. Closing with a handful of wins, both boys and girls in Northwest Suburban Conference play, which always is not easy to do. Yeah. So those programs have made improvements as well. Staten plays it back. Again, a little miscommunication. It ends up popping to Craddichville. The Bengals never cleanly got it back across midfield. Anoka a chance to own it. Working on the near side for Dammer. We have had some of those defensive mistakes, and that's going to get interesting as we get closer on the field towards goal. They've been able to recover from a lot of them since it's been further up the field when it's happened. Captain Dammer was looking for a call all throughout that exchange. Eventually it came. A free kick taken by Olivia Anda. Two goals, six assists. First two, Blue, first two. Dammer will actually sit down as well. Sub was waiting there for, for her, Lauren Hansen. We'll check in. Kendall Stadden goal, seven minutes into this game. So far the lone score. Bengals had that one trickle through, but enough defensive bodies there to at least push it to the far side, force Harris to send it down and out of bounds. Throw in coming up for Anoka. Bengals finished with nine Northwest Suburban Conference wins. As mentioned, that's fourth. But again, the Tornadoes in this attacking half, giving themselves the opportunity to have the Bengals mess up and possibly get a shot here. It works the other way too, that pressure you were talking about. Anoka wants to keep it off their defense and play a pressure game against the Bengals. They haven't been 100% crisp on the defensive side, eliminating these opportunities and more so, Blythe, it seemed like some of their struggles have been through the midfield, cleanly getting it across, at least over the last couple of minutes. Their throw in deflected back out off of Bengals, so it goes right back to Anoka. Craddageville eventually fights it away. 
Comes bounding back away off the foot of Newby. Elka just clogging up space there. Moran comes over, knocks it back. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It just looked like they were all bunched, both teams, and knowing that for whichever team was going to get the ball, it would work in their favor to spread out, make the defense hack to go wide and create some of those openings because it was very congested. Bengals able to work it up the field. Zachman found Stadden. Eventually found the foot of a defender and it went out of bounds. Grace Hughes keeps the pressure in. Back to Zachman. She had the assist on the lone goal. Right about right here. Towards the middle. Knee in right there with space. Leads it back. Craddichville, another long boot. That's good. Off the crossbar. What a buildup, though, for the Bengals. It didn't result in a goal, but we like that decision to play that extra pass. We saw it work out quite well for them to find the opening and get to launch one from distance. Clawson has it bounced away, and Oka trying to survive this push. And that's exactly what you were just talking about, right? Black, I mean, on the opposite end, they found that space. Craddichville could have set up a picnic blanket and waited <laughs> to take that shot. And she nearly got she it to go. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> little cheese, little cracker. Yeah, why not? Go with why the goal. Yeah. <laughs> but it all came from that extra pass that you mentioned, finding a way to create that space. Maya Anderson will check in for the Bengals. Olivia Goddard do the same for Anoka. Past the midway point of half number one. This was a four-goal combined half in the matchup in the regular season back in September, each team with two. So far, just one. Bengals doing enough defensively. Who's this going towards? They say deflected last by Anoka. Bengals survive a little bit there. Knocked down by Danner. Three Bengals surrounding. Zachman comes away with it. That could have been dangerous, <laughs> laying that one off towards goal. Knee in the middle. Solid pass. Right up those hash marks, but intercepted by Anoka quickly. Lauren Hansen has it, and she was offside. offside. Coming up on 18 minutes to go. Same field coming up. We'll have the boys match up. That's Blaine and Andover. Similar storylines there. Should be a tight matchup. Still a long way to go here. Free ball bounces down. Right to the Bengals. Looking for Stadden. It was cut off. Once again, <laughs> Newby gets another shot in the middle. Her third pass forward deflected back towards her. Zachman over just a shade late. Good for the Tornadoes. They were able to shut that one down before it could get to Stadden. She had her back to go on the top of the 18-yard box, and she does quite well with that quick turn and shot. So to eliminate it before it even got there, worked in their favor. Out of bounds, that'll be an Oka ball. Caitlin Dennis to, to toss it in. Jada Eckley, a senior, checks in for Anoka. So a few more substitutions for Anoka. Going a little deeper into the bench for the man they call Coach Dragon. If your first name is Dragon, why not? <laughs> I know if I had a coach that was named Dragon, yeah, it, just would, it Dragon. would be pretty cool. <laughs> Anoka ball, under 17 to go. Kendall Stadden made it one nothing. Bengals. They've been able to nurse that lead the rest of the way. Anoka done some positive things to keep pressure on the Bengals. But yet to come away with a goal. Or really even a shot on Tess Inlo, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. They've been I mean in the area. Able to dribble it, or I mean, play it through that it dribbled into the box, kind of, but. Nothing too dangerous for her. This tournament playing out. Over the next seven days, championship scheduled for next Tuesday, week from tonight. 
semifinals on Thursday. Talk about our two teams meeting Bengals and Cougars, and of course that wouldn't happen until the championship game a week from today. All things going according to plan. Bengals or Tornadoes looking for the winner of Andover or Forest Lake. Andover, another Northwest Suburban Conference team. One of the three teams that the Bengals lost to early in the year in that one and three start. They lost to Andover, who finished in the top three in the Northwest Suburban, and the other two were two top five teams in the state. Centennial and Maple Grove, goal kick coming up for Inlow. Always going to get high-quality competition when you're playing through a Northwest Suburban Conference regular season schedule, even if it's teams that aren't in your section when the season comes to an end. Chamblin Park, the Tino Grace both ended up winning nine games. Rogers won ten. And that's the middle of the pack in the Northwest Suburban. And even this season, too, I feel like overall we've just had some tremendous fall weather for <laughs> these ladies to play in. Can't complain today. Turned out to be a beautiful day for soccer. I'm sure it feels great playing, and the guys still will have decent, you know, temperatures for October. I can't believe we're already saying that, and we're getting close to the middle of October. But yet still, you wouldn't be thinking that at all. I was looking back at the highlights from – that section championship we did. And of course, everything was a little later last year, right? Yeah. Just because of the way the schedule worked out. But it was it was frozen ground a <laughs> bit. Gloves and long sleeves. I know. I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> I don't want it to get that close. Yeah, no. that was the players. I was up here, in, you know, <laughs> yeah, basically exactly. in a sleeping bag. <laughs> I know. Well, that's what I always think about too: broadcasting versus the playing days. You know, what I can wear now to go to a game if it gets cold. I'm like, ooh, I can have boots on, I can have my jacket. Hand warmers. Yeah, hot <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> but, and then when you're out there, you're like, okay, well, here's my shorts. There's a limit, <laughs> yeah. And if you uh, obviously get shoved down at some point and the field is wet or whatever and it's that cold too, you're like, okay, this is gonna be throughout the rest of the game. <laughs> All told, you throw in the turf and the weather and well, the conditions shouldn't play a factor in these ones tonight, that's for sure. All about the soccer on the field. And that's why whenever I think about these ladies, putting myself in their shoes, just to give the advice of just enjoy it. These are like the most ideal conditions. So to go out there and just have a blast because you get to, you know, <laughs> it's just like this is, these are the fun parts. <laughs> Soak it all in basically what they're looking at the rest of the way, certainly for the section tournament. I don't think we have any sort of cliff coming where we're going to drop off and be much different than this. Maybe a little chillier for championship Tuesday night. High that day, supposed to be 57 as it stands right now. Could get a little chillier. By the time game is rolling, Carly Anderson checks in. Pascarella came back in, I believe, was the other substitution, yep, for the Bengals. Bengals had a good chance that went off the crossbar for Craddochville, which was about four minutes ago. That shot from deep, really their only true opportunity over the last 10 minutes or so. Anoka has shut everything else down. And that's where you see how important it's going to be that the Bengals incorporate other players in that attack when they are looking to double team, triple team stat in or at least have somebody always on her. Tornado's on side that time, but too strong. Trying to get down to Lauren Hansen down the field. Three goals for her on the season. Bracketed by two defenders, and Inlow was waiting. Pascarella back out. Hits Zachman right in the middle. As that one poked away by Hennis. I know Ella Hennis has played a good half so far defensively. Again, she tries to get in the way of a pass ticketed for Staten. Knocks it out. Zachman hit Staten with the header. Staten comes back towards her. 
Yeah, that ball stayed in the air for quite some time. Oftentimes, you're just wanting to get it down. You want to be able to collect control because that one, obviously, 50-50 for such a long time. Bengal ball, another chance on the throw in. Ian reverses. Good play moving up the field for Maya Anderson. She'll chip it ahead. Looking for Newby on that side. Push to the middle and back out. That's a great opportunistic play, though, by a defender there, Blythe, to step up and make sure they own that possession there at the very least for Anderson, even though it didn't work out. Yeah, and also trusting your teammates if you are stepping up, making sure that, hey, I know that they have my back if this goes south. Mascarella on the right side this time. Has it knocked away. Nian's there, though, to take it back for the Bengals. Working tough against Allison Hookham. She's got some size to her game as well. A goal and five assists for the seniors. Down towards the corner. Good cross back towards the middle. Nobody home but Bengals. Working to clear. We'll just have the throw in as Abby Strasser gets it out of harm's way for a moment. And those are always the tough ones, too, because, of course, she gets the cross off. It was a shorter cross. It really didn't make its way towards in front of net. And if you're even getting inside the box, the other forward is like, I want to be lined up so I can put this one on net. And oftentimes there's too much space, you see, between her and her teammate. Defender's able to get in there. That one deflected off the tornado. So now Strasser tossed this one in. Allison Therian will check in. Good first half for Ellie Nee, and she always seems to find her way around the ball. The nature of a midfielder, though, right? True. <laughs> Hoping it reverse that ball and switch it. Definitely. Stadden. Bangs that one off the back of Newby. It'll be a chance to chase. Pascarella showing off the speed. Got in the way of that. Frees it to Newby. Pascarella. Who she got on the cross. Bounces to Stadden. One defender. Shot. Just angles wide. Newby was there too. Half second later and she might have the redirect and a goal. And it goes out of bounds for a goal kick for Anoka. Yeah, and I can feel myself holding my breath just because knowing Staden inside the box and not really having that person marking her to begin with. That deep defender was there, but before when we've seen it work out for the Tornadoes, they were really up in her grill before she could turn or do anything and face up to net. So that could have been, could have been dangerous there here as we get closer to half, wanting to keep this one goal deficit, I'm sure, as the Tornadoes fight to bring it to halftime. The way that one materialized, I was thinking that's going to be a shot for Staden all the way, but I also didn't see Newby crashing down. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that's what she was going for, too, on that cross. And the timing I again. I almost just don't think so. You she don't think so? You so in just some of the highlights that we've had, yeah. even for Sports Den, I feel like she's hit some incredible angles where you're like, that's impossible. Like, you're not going to score from that angle. And somehow she puts it in the net, and you're like, okay. <laughs> I guess it's not and for everyone, well but she can that, do it. <laughs> to that point, though, too, if you can do that and give yourself a shot to yeah. make a shot like that, it works as a cross yeah, anyway, exactly, right? So yep. then if you miss it, exactly, it just yeah. makes her so much more dynamic. Came up just short on either the goal or the cross. Feeds to Pascarella. Stayed on side. There's three defenders back there with her. Newbie to the corner. Newbie shot, and that one goes wide. Took that one a little quick, but it was slow developing, and the defense was certainly back there. Yeah, and one of those phrases, of course, you're not going to score unless you're taking those shots. So we haven't seen a crazy load of shots coming from either team, but nice to see the Bengals getting a few here before halftime. Claire Moran checks in for Anoka, along with Olivia Anda.
Goal kick for Anoka. Played well at midfield by the Bengals. Knocked off the back of Strasser. Excuse me, that's Grace Hughes. They're in, there in the middle, kind of playing that role of Ellie Nian, who she came in for late in this half. Midfielder to try and reverse it. And there's Zachman with space. Settles it down, tried to hit Pascarella on the run, a little bit too strong. Five to go in this first half. Goal scoring 28 minutes ago. And if you're the Bengals, yes, you have the 1-0 lead, but knowing that possibly you've had some defensive mistakes, so possibly there could be another goal. What if Anoka gets some, you know, accidental hit that bumps off your shin guard wrong and they're off to the races in front of Tess Enlow and you want to make sure you put yourself in a better position than just this 1-0. You saw them take a few more opportunities late in this first half. But I think for them it would be nice to go into halftime with more than just this one goal lead. Kendall Stan with a little space. She's going to work it ahead to Pascarella. And offsides. Comes back to Anoka. They also did, they being Anoka, just bring, brought back in Hadley Dameron, who had been on the bench after taking a bump and kind of limping off there. She's a scorer, one of the captains, to work with Hookham with some size in the middle. Looking for number 13 in white right there. And if that one could have slid through, they did have a runner that was going through Moran was just about to get on the other end of it if it could have snuck past the de defense. This one tips down off the foot of Claire Moran. Numbers weren't there. Bengals stayed strong defensively. Pascarella, what a move on the sideline. Has that one knifed away, though. At the very last moment, comes back after it, battling with Veronica Moran. Veronica's yeah, the like sophomore, that. Claire's the senior. Gotta like that to see her just right away taking action to make sure that she gets the ball back or at least shoves it out of out of bounds for her team to set up. Because there's definitely players who will get the ball stolen from them and they just hang their heads and are upset that that happened to them. But the players that, you know, it lights a fire in them to get the ball back are the ones that you know are gonna continue on probably in this sport. <laughs> they have it in them. Carly Anderson on the quick attack for the Bengals. Two and a half to go. Back in the vicinity of Anderson, able to shoulder it over there to Zachman. Fed down towards Abby Newby. Newby didn't start this game on the field, came in early though. Provided a spark. Out of bounds for Anoka with 2.10 remaining. Amber Hansen check into the game. Bengals, we mentioned, no strangers to the shutout. Long way to go in this. But they've only got one other one nothing victory this season. That came all the way back in game number five of the year. Game number six of the year, the second of their nine-game win streak over Eastridge. Dad couldn't get by the second defender. Had it knocked away. Out of bounds, far side. Bengals with another chance. Newbie knocked to the deck. Here's an interesting spot now for the Bengals on this free kick. Yeah, as we near just that minute mark. Tornadoes defend it well. Rolls 
back in the vicinity of Staden, under 50 seconds to go. Bengals looking to hustle, as are the ball girls on the sideline. Well done, Grace Hughes. Back to Staden, knocked away by Moran. Up the sideline. Drop back down, 30 seconds to go. And a great player to have it for just those 30. I <laughs> hope she could have taken it. Will be Anoka Ball. And some confusion, which has cost a lot of time. Oh, it's going to be, it is a throw in, but yeah, it's about 10 Ooh. seconds or so that Anoka <laughs> lost there. And that's going to get us to halftime as it stands. So 1 nothing, a goal seven minutes in for Kendall Staden, her 16th of the year. Gets the Bengals on the board first in this 3-6 matchup in Section 7. Second half action to decide this first round matchup between the Bengals and Tornadoes. Still to come. It's a playoff Tuesday in girls soccer on North Metro TV. The thing I've missed the most um, during this entire time, this pandemic, has been you. I love playing to a live audience. There's nothing like it. The COVID-19 vaccines are going to help us all get back to the moments we miss. It's totally normal to have questions. I did too. That's why it's so important to get informed. So ask your doctor and get the facts. It's up to you. one nothing after one here at Bengals Stadium. As the Bengals, the number three seed, trying to take care of business in the first round in 7-3-A. First half action didn't take very long to get the Bengals on the board. And Blythe, we knew who it was going to be more likely than not. And it was Kendall Stadden got this opportunity early. Stopped by Caroline Huff, the goaltender. But then it was Tessa Zachman into Staden in the middle of defenders and knocks it through with the right foot. Just a beautiful play and the goal that they needed that would stand up. Couple of close call opportunities. That one knocked off the crossbar by Francesca Kratichville. And I thought Anoka did a fairly nice job as you see here late, making things tough on the Bengals after they got that one goal lead. Exactly, and I think it's interesting too is I almost didn't think Staden would be that player to knock in the first one, only because knowing that that was the main goal by the Tornadoes coming into this game was to shut her down. I thought maybe one of her teammates was going to score, and then, yes, she would score today. She would definitely still find the net, but that would be once they relaxed a little bit after somebody else did score on them that maybe they would start to try to defend and spread out more. But, of course, she just proves that. She's going to take it to him, even if that is their priority was to shut her down. That made it that much more of a goal for her to find it. It's just the fall of Kendall Stadden proving things. She's not going to start the second half here. Of course, what she's done on the football field as one of the two kickers for the Bengals. She's got the jacket on here to start the second half. So the Bengals will try to get her something else. She's the first one up clapping and cheering for her teammates there on the sideline. 40 minutes standing between them and continuing their season. A 1-0 lead over Anoka, a team they scored five goals against. In their first matchup, three of those came in the second half. Yeah, a little interesting decision. I would have almost thought she still would have started, but especially if they hadn't had that two-goal lead or a little bit more. Um, Pascarella feeds it in front, and that one tipped away by Huff. Great run down there by Maya Anderson, it looked like. Second time we've seen the defender streak down the field, and she's got the smile for the efforts, too. But, yeah, you're right. You would think maybe start and then sit somewhere early on because you 
have to conserve the energy, but she'll just stay on the bench here to start half number two. Even without her, the Bengals work an excellent opportunity that Huff is able to clear away. Well, you know sometimes that a soccer game can be de decided by that 1-0. However, both of these teams have proved that, hey, they can get into that final third. Sure, we haven't seen as much attack as in shots from the Tornadoes as we could in this game. Maybe they'll be able to have some in the second half. But just knowing that they were able to spend some time in that final third can prove that they can make something happen here in this game to tie this up. You're just one mistake away at that point, especially if you stay in the one nothing lead or in this one nothing deficit. They've played in three one nothing finals. Two of those the tornadoes lost to Tatina Grace and to St. Francis. And they won a one nothing contest against Osseo. That was two games ago before their season finale their loss to Spring Lake Park. Well, as this half gets rolling. Two minutes in, we see the boys from Anoka getting warmed up on the Bengals softball field. They'll be up next in the nightcap of our doubleheader. Yeah, and the lights already turned on now in this girls game. Might not need it too much, but they're getting ready <laughs> for it's when it gets dark soon. Getting darker earlier these days, Blythe. I know, I know. I can't believe it, but it is true. Already we'll see. <laughs> October 12th. Shelves are empty of the most popular Halloween costumes. It'll be here before you know it. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say Halloween candy. I'm Halloween candy. Yeah, yeah. I, pr I participated in that. <laughs> Never a bad time for Halloween candy. Yeah, exactly. It should be all year long. Absolutely. My Anderson on the near side. Peyton Padilla trying to reverse the field. Anoka. To send it down, defenders back, misplayed and taken away by Lauren Hansen. And there was that potential mistake that we were talking about. Is something like that could allow an attacker from the Tornadoes to enter inside that box and put a shot on Enlow? Hansen, the sophomore, she's been down there all game long, just hasn't really had an opportunity with any space. But she was ready for it. Had that taken a bad bounce. Turns into a throw in anyway, right in the middle for Hookham. She's able to roll it through traffic, but Tess Inlow right there to scoop it up. Bengals eight wins a season ago. Lost, as we mentioned, to Centennial. In the section semis, 2 nothing. They were shut out that day. Quite the team the Cougars obviously had. Have again, quite the team the Bengals had then and have again this year too. Open for that rematch. Just five total goals last year allowed in their eight wins. They were winning with defense a season ago. Trying to do it again this season, just 1.1 on the goals allowed average per game. And seven team shutouts. Left footed boot by Claire Moran. Back towards the middle. Got up on the hand of a tornado. But the time of possession here that the tornadoes have just had in these last couple of minutes has been quite good. Five minutes gone. We've spent, outside of that first quick sprint up the field, we've spent most of it on this left-hand side with possession for Anoka. Ellie Nian is back in there. Kind of breather the last 10 minutes or so of the first half. As the Bengals are working out that far side, the Tornadoes have been able to somewhat shut them down. Sophia Walraven over there. Trying to work it through that. Clog of tornadoes there for the Bengals. Anoka throw in. Scoreboard still listing no shots on goal for Anoka. Three for the Bengals. They haven't let that deter them, them being the tornadoes. So applying that pressure, intercepted by Anderson. 
actually leads to a secondary defender coming over. Moran able to clear it. Padilla had that one pop up on her to midfield. Six minutes gone in half number two. Padilla right there again. Hanson right in the same spot. Both Amber and Lauren for the Tornadoes. Comes all the way over near side for Anderson again. Chip back to her wide. Knocked out. It'll stay with the Bengals. It's Avery solely on this near side. Waiting for that opportunity. Goes to Pascarella. It's been nifty in close quarters so far today. Clears it out. Up front for Therian. Right-footed boot deflected right back. So Kratichville nearly put one in from right there with a little more space than she just had. It'll be an Oka ball. And that was a much-needed possession for the Bengals. They haven't really had the ball in their attacking half as much. We've almost seen a little bit of a shift, the Tornadoes having it. They've gone back and forth for sure, but the amount of time in that final third and on that far attacking part of their field. She's going to cash it in. They had a winning streak of three that was snapped by Spring Lake Park last Thursday. In that stretch, they scored 11 goals in those three games. Outscored their opponents 11 to nothing. Putting up eight, two, and one goals against Park Center, Armstrong, and at Osseo. Long shot, too high. Inlow was there to put the right hand up, but of course it was Lauren Hansen. He's just been hungry for that opportunity down there along with Hookham all season long. All game long, excuse me. Eight minutes gone, pressure. Still kept on by Anoka. Cross. Came up a little bit short, but the Tornadoes again applying that pressure. Yeah, we're seeing the Tornadoes come out in the second half hungry to get that goal, that tying goal. Seen them in the attack and even get some of those balls towards Tess Enlow. That she's had to somewhat think about doing something where in the first half she really didn't have to make too many decisions at all. Danner's been a bit of a spark plug off the bench since, since she came in in the first half. She was around the ball these last two times. It's Hanson, though, here. Tried to send it up to Danner. It's deflected back. Claire Moran from the logo. Wonderful down to decision. the far side. Wonderful decision to play that one out wide. We're going to look at them trying to do a give and go. Hanson to Anda. Couldn't get there. Lee's trying to force it deep and maybe a mistake and give them the corner chance, but it just trickles out too strong. Here comes Kendall Statton back into the game. About a 10-minute break. Caitlin Dennis also checks in for Anoka. We'll see what difference that makes with the Bengal attack. We've seen a lot of attack from the Tornadoes trying to lock it in. This attacking third, but now, of course, having Statton back in the game for them. Helping bring up the intensity. Pascarella with Anderson to her right. Anderson a chance to cross it. She does. Just cleared out by the Tornadoes. Pressure still on from the Bengals. And right before Stadden could get there, too, that ball was going towards her. If she could have collected it before the Tornadoes cleared it. Therian back to Pascarella. It was Olivia Goddard. Was able to step through for the Tornadoes. Turn away that chance. Anderson and Pascarella in tight space there. Also trying to find Therian. Tornadoes waiting to get two players back in. Emma Olsen and Callie Harris. Ball to the corner. Pascarella got there. 
Deflected away defensively, but it's going to stay with the Bengals. And I do believe that we have seen the difference with Stadden back in the game of what the Bengals have been able to do, bringing this ball into that final third for them. Over the head of Stadden that time. Darian ran up to it on a good feed from Nian and just hooked it wide to that left side. That's what the Bengals need to do. They haven't had a whole lot of shots here in the second half. So now that they're down in that end, the ability to at least try to put one that way. You can see Staden kind of clear through that space too, right in front of Theory, and it opened up a little bit of a hole for her. And that's what it's nice is one that can happen because of them really honing in on Staden that she is going to draw some defenders with her as she moves and gets out of the way. Great move along the outside. Knocked away eventually from Wall Raven. Chipped down towards the net. High bouncing ball pulled down by Caroline Huff. Wall Raven's been on that weak side throughout the second half here. Kind of forgotten about there, but she created that opportunity. Radishville back towards the middle. Therian back down to Wall Raven. Great decision, bringing it to this near side in that space. All kinds of space. Anderson just kept it. Nobody marked her. Cross. Pascarella had it knocked out. We've got our first corner of this game coming up. Pascarella dragged it down there long enough to force the cross. Looks like Therian will take it. And it was pretty slick, them finding Pascarella, because I could have seen that attacker just trying to whether shoot it on net or pass it into those into that sea of players, possibly finding a teammate. They will boom this one towards the back, short of Staden, but the header right there from Pascarella is saved by Huff. Good execution, good save on the back end by Caroline Huff. She was the last Bengal attacker in front of Kendall Staden, and they dropped it to her. And just had it saved away. Yeah, and the fact that she's just a sophomore just Going to have a lot of experience under her belt as she continues to move forward in the program. Free ball bounced to Anoka. 14 minutes gone, 13 and a half here in the second half. Still sitting on that one nothing Bengal lead that they picked up in the first seven minutes of this one. Stadden down the side to Pascarella. Really has to turn on the speed to try and get there, and she does stop it on a slide. For Sonoka to knock it out of bounds. What a play that is, Blythe. Eventually, Harris able to kick it away. She always has the Jets ready to go. <laughs> she pushes the button. We see how quickly she gets up the field. Sliding, stops the ball, and a dime gets back up. Staden looking for space. Free ball. Pascarella takes the boot with the left foot and just hooked it. She had a little open net there, too, to force Huff to this near side. Subs both ways. Abby Newby time, also Abby Strasser. So I guess it's just Abby time. <laughs> they check into the game. Ella Hennis and Hadley Dammer into the game for Anoka. Coming up on the 25 minute mark of half number two. Staden through the legs of one defender. But we got to think about the difference that this has been. We saw those substitutions come in like Staden, and we've seen a lot more action here on the right side of your screen versus the beginning of this first half. The Tornadoes had quite a bit of possession. Haven't quite made it back into that final third for some minutes now. Bengals nearly had a shot, and then Dammer knifes through there. Takes it away. Nothing materializing. Throw in coming up for Strasser. Intercepted by Claire Moran. Strasser dumps it back down. Yeah. 
knee and fancy footwork towards the corner to eventually get the cross. That's deflected away by Anoka. Strasser, eyes upfield. Trying to drop it down to Newby in space there. Craddockville attacking. Daniels able to lock it in though. Keep it in this attacking half. Really wearing on this tornado defense. Wall Raven through the middle, little touch pass, shot knocked away, forced the left-handed punch, and the corner kick coming up, great attack. By the bangles and knee in there. That was Staden as something you talked about, looking to distribute. Did so to the middle. Darian will be back on. They know the winner of the team at the same side of the bracket, that is Andover getting the win as the two seed beats the seven seed Forest Lake. That one's still in play. No, they say it hits off the football crossbar there and deflects down. Couple of corners though, forced here in the second half by the Bengals as Samantha Davis checks into the game for Anoka. Something I was thinking about too is the fact that Kendall Stadden is in also can be creating the defense for Anoka to stay back. So we're not seeing as much attack from them because they are having to try to mark Staden, and so they're not sending another player forward that would help them get further up the field. It's an excellent point. I mean, you can't, when she's not in there, you can kind of live with what might happen behind you, but you're not gonna let number 10 find a way to beat you one-on-one. -on -one. Dropped it down towards Newby. Staden header towards Nian who was bumped. And so, again, interesting spot to work with here for the Bengals. On the free kick, still leading it one to nothing, coming up on the midway point of half number two. Andover await Thursday night. It would be at Andover, no matter what happens here, is the number two seed. Bengals wouldn't be able to host again unless the unthinkable happens. Cambridge Isanti beats Centennial or the Luther Coon Rapids were to beat Centennial. Really unthinkable as we're told Centennial's up eight nothing at half and that shot saved away by Caroline Huff after giving up that first goal Blythe. She has been fantastic on some shots on goal for the Bengals. That was their sixth. Yeah, she stepped up big time for them making sure that she's keeping this game in check. Just that one goal lead for the Bengals and that's allowing Anoka to feel like they are still in this game. Anything can happen, a lot of time on the clock. So as long as they keep themselves in this position, really, it could come down to the wire. Staden, left-footed cross. Nope, that was a shot. She put it right on Huff. She had two teammates over there. Which would have come down to a deflection. Which is why it's interesting. I'm surprised she didn't take the free kick. It was under, like, it was probably 25 at the 25-yard line, and I think she could probably put that one on net from that distance even. Left footed from where she was at that angle, I didn't think there was any chance. But that might have been a just confusion on the broadcaster part instead, not looking at the angle correctly. But either way, excellent effort by Kendall Stanton. She's put so many in, like I said, with these just incredible angles that you wouldn't expect that that was going to go in. Strasser tracks it down on the sideline, able to keep it under control to Wall Raven on the far side. And a play that looked like they were just going to give up a throw in on the far side. Able to work it back to midfield. Impressive for the Bengals. Bradageville eyeing Staden a little bit too strong on the lead. Knocked back down by Maya Anderson, who's played a great game so far. Taken away in the middle by Goddard. Drive it deep down into the corner, but no chance there for Emma Olsen to catch up before Anderson gets there. Anderson continues to try to play it, forcing it out of bounds. So good work by Olsen to keep that pressure on. Earn the throw in here. So under the 20 minute mark, game number one of our doubleheader. Fresh legs waiting to get in for the Blaine Bengals. checks up and stays in the field of play for a moment, but then it's off of Anoka. 
So that will allow Pascarella and Zachman and Anderson. That's Carly Anderson to make their way in. Therian sits down, as does Ellie Nian and Sophia Walraven. Stadden slides her way between two defenders. Pushes it out to Carly Anderson. Bounces it ahead. Newby plays it to herself with her head. Pops it to Pascarella in the middle. Defenders there. Newby still after it. And was that off Newby? No, that's going to be Bengal ball. Opportunity here with 18 and a half to go. Bounding in. And that one touched last. Ooh, by the Bengals, they say. Newby sliding in there, so it will be a goal kick. Anoka surviving a little bit there again, Blythe. There's opportunities for the Bengals. Players in the right spots, but it just did not materialize. Yeah, since about the 30-minute mark, just those first 10 minutes, we saw the Tornadoes in their attacking third, being able to put some pressure and have Tess Enlow have to think about, hey, is this ball going to come into my box? Am I going to have to do anything except... Now we've seen this go the completely other way. Again, much like the first half, we saw a lot of Bengal attack, and they've been able to continue to do so here in the second half. Dammer trying to make her way through midfield. Bengals made it tough. Pascarella on the far side. Tried to get it to Newby. Free ball up in the air, just knocked away from Craddichville. There you see that dynamic Blythe was talking about about five minutes ago. Just one Anoka Tornado back there. Whereas in the first couple of minutes, there might have been at least one more to try and turn that into an offensive possession. And that's what we saw all first half long. 22 in white, Lauren Hansen. Alone against three defenders for the most part. Strasser takes it upfield, knocked away. Anoka throw in. And as the clock starts to wind down, again, both these teams knowing that it's a do or die matchup. They have to win to move on. And this Anoka Tornado team needs to score a goal to tie this one up to give themselves a chance. And so we'll see them as this clock starts to tick down, even putting that much more effort. Well, and that's the uncomfortable situation you have to put yourself in, right? At some point. You can't bring or have someone just shadowing Kendall Stadden. You have to free her up because you have to free up that player to put the pressure on. We'll see what that turns into for the Bengals. Yeah, and who knows? Because also at some point, later, later in this first half, if the score remains the same, you could see them even sending their goalkeeper up to play more of like a sweep keep position just to get those players forward to give themselves a chance to tie it up before time expires. Whistle against the Bengals to give the free kick deep to Anoka. Opportunity to flip the field here with some subs waiting. Trying to get Claire Moran and Allison Hookham back in. Give that one right back to the Bengals. Anderson throw in. Stays in, stays Bengal ball. Stayed in for a second and deflected out. Dad holds that ball backing against the defender. Waited for the cut from Anderson. Again, the Bengals doing a great job locking this in, keeping it deep in their end, even if they're able to, you know, turn it over. Under 15 minutes to go. Tornado's got that throw in. Aggressive play by the Bengals. Official coming over, he's going to have a conversation with Amber Hansen and Kendall Stadden as they're jockeying for position. It's been Hansen here in the second half once Stadden came back in. It's had the unenviable task 
of trying to watch Kendall Stadden. So the official stop time for just a moment. Now it rolls again with 14 and a half to go. Bangle ball. Stadden took it, deflects back to her. Around her back she goes to Zachman. Crossing the field. Pascarella too high. Just that quick though, Blythe, they got it from right to left and the defense moving allowed Pascarella to have a free look at it. And you felt that build up and also Kendall Stadden, I think too, of when you're getting talked to there by the referee, sometimes that can also light a fire in you. You saw her maybe get a little upset and that can sometimes just bring that next level of play to different players. Sometimes it works opposite depending on what type of player you are, but we see Kendall Stadden almost seeming like she wanted to get that even more. Pushed up too strong for the Tornadoes. Hansen trying to curl her way around that. Be an excellent angle to maybe cross and keep the pressure on. Instead, it goes back to the Bengals. Stadden using that size to her advantage. That one out, Bengal ball. Stadden wanted that one up. You could see her tap in the head. Just a little bit too high on the throw in. Zachman. Able to maintain possession. Great decision. Yep. Centers to space, and now it's all the way back over to Strasser. Holding it along the sideline, kind of out of harm's way with all that traffic. She does end up putting it out of bounds. Anoka ball under 13 to go. Credit the Tornadoes. You talked about it even after the goal was scored. That first half, a win for them, keeping it at 1-0. If it was even 2-0 right now, this would feel done, dusted, and over. And instead, it's still 1-0. And you're just that moment away from the Tornadoes being right there. Huff comes up aggressively to play that one well. especially because we saw that back line from the Bengals having just a few of those blunders throughout this game, not anything that was detrimental, always able to recover and stay on the upper end of it. But that can definitely be a factor as we get later on in this game. If anything does happen and they slips through, momentum can change everything if something can happen that quick with little time on the clock. Strasser got that one to the head of a teammate there. But not a whole lot of authority on that redirect. I think that was Newby up front. Bengals still sitting on that one nothing lead. Popped up, nobody home. It's up to Olsen to try and sprint her way to it. Puts the pressure on. Bengals still a chance to play it cleanly. Upfield it goes, back to Pascarella. What a play by the Bengals, all told, to get that one all the way back to midfield. Now they get the throw in. Pascarella looking for Stadden. Three defenders around her. Try it again. Left there for Zachman. I don't think Stadden put it as much on that as she wanted to. Yeah, that's what they call a hospital pass. <laughs> and you're going to have to go into that one, and you know it's going to be a collision. Newbie. Right side to Anderson. Pascarella. One on one. Got space. Stadden on the back side. Still a free ball. Newby was there for a moment. It's cleared out. Pascarella to take it right back. Cross. Off the defender. Up comes Zachman. And that was deflected down. Great work defensively that time by Amber Hansen. Players hit the deck, play on. 10 minutes to go, and Anoka's the most upset with that. The official letting it roll, and the Tornadoes send it to midfield. But they should be celebrating, getting that ball out of the box, a dangerous ball bouncing around, and ultimately Tornadoes were able to come up and clear that one out of danger. Here we go again. Pascarella, though, a little bit too strong on the lead that time for Carly Anderson. Out of bounds on the far side, under 10 minutes to go. Avery 
Soli. Ellie Meehan, two starters back in. Abby Newby and Carly Anderson will sit down. Olivia Onda checks in for Anoka. Bangle throw in for Strasser. Under 10 to go. And over Waiting in the second round. That one just trickles out of bounds. Dammer trying to get there quickly. She has first contact off the throw in to drive it further down, force the Bengals to kick it out. Throw in coming up. And this is where the Tornadoes want to be. They want to be able to spend some time down here. Just eight minutes, 30 seconds, basically on the clock. And they're going to need to make some dangerous plays in the box if they want to tie this one up. And cleared out. The reverse to the near side. Bengals getting aggressive. And it pays off for Pascarella. Out of bounds it goes. It'll be Bengal ball. Pascarella reading that one. Exactly what she needed to do, come back, make sure she puts the pressure on, and they get the ball back as a result. Ellie Nian just has that one trickle out. So impressed with her. I mean, Kendall Stadden gets a lot of, obviously, the goal scoring, and you see her footwork with that all the time. But I feel like Ellie Nian's going to be one of the top Bengals when it comes to ball handling on this team. In space, in close quarters, her foot on the ball, she always has a chance to do something. Yeah, and having another year next year to even regroup and get better throughout the offseason, it's going to be an exciting time to see her as a senior. Maya Anderson sent it all the way down. Anoka forces it back. Playing the clock more than anything now with 7.22 to go. Sent upfield, Strasser in a foot race. She wins it to force it out of bounds just in front of the charging Hadley Dammer, who hasn't really been at 100% at any point in this game. Certainly not after the first 10 minutes, but giving it everything right there. Manoka trying to settle in who's going to take this. And Dammer is over there, she's coming off, that's why. She's going the long way. Now I'd say as it gets to be it, now closer, we're closing in on that five minute, still a minute 30 seconds before that five minute mark. But this is when some of those emotions, you start to feel them if you're Anoka. Stadden, last defender to get her, does so, and it's Lauren Youngquist who knocks it away. That had clinching goal written all over it. And Youngquist was able to end that before it really got rolling. Solely. Drags down towards the corner. Anoka able to clear. Coming up on the six minute mark. Keep an eye out for what might change strategy wise for the Tornadoes if it's still one nothing. Pascarella takes the shot. Sends it down into the boys squad getting warmed up for their game. I was mentioning just the, the change in even emotion of these players as we get down towards this five minute mark, knowing that the rest of the game they've been thinking, we have time, we have time, we have time, we have time, we can get this back. And now we're closing in on that, where you can't keep saying that. You have to get something, something has to happen if this one's gonna continue. Anderson has it pop back to her. She's trying to work upfield with Nian. All kinds of space where this one's landing. Headed back down towards Stadden. Working with Soli. Soli's to the middle. Stadden with two defenders just walking it down towards the corner. Spins around a defender. The angled shot into the side of the net. Even for Stadden. It was yeah. too deep <laughs> down to the goal line on those angles. And what's interesting too is probably a good amount of those today that she hasn't necessarily made. She's been able to get that ball out. But throughout the season, like I said, coming into the game, 29 shots on goal and 
37 shots overall. So, I mean, a very good percentage just that she's getting it on goal, making it have that opportunity to go in even if she wasn't making it. You bring up shots on goal, and unofficially the count is 8 nothing in favor of the Bengals. They haven't allowed them to take a shot on goal. They have not allowed Anoka to take a corner kick. The defense for the Bengals, while I think I'd agree, hasn't been perfectly crisp at all times, but those recovery points are what has been so big for this team. Never turning those mistakes into something bigger right there. Nearly a mistake, but it's up to Strasser. Craddichville, she nearly made it a 2 nothing game in the first half. Over to Anderson. Her boot deflected right at the top of the box and then cleared out by Moran. And those deflections can be what changes the game, too, as you see that ball. It could have deflected and put Stad in with some opportunity to put that one on net. Avery Danner trying her best to work it out for the Tornadoes. Strasser's back there. Over to Danner again. She'll chip it ahead, trying to drop it at the foot of Lauren Hansen, a little too strong. Allow Padilla to get there. Free ball, some numbers for Anoka. Force the Bengals to clear it out with three minutes to go. This is good if you're Anoka. Hey, let's get it off of this throw-in. You have some momentum. You're building it up the field. But you're going to have to move to help keep possession here on this throw-in. Pascarella puts it up into the air, drops down at the foot of Moran. Up ahead it goes. And ball, you'd almost think, but no call. That's what Anoka wanted. Now Hansen knocked down. She's just outside the box. I am a little bit shocked. You think about what a difference that could have made if that handball would have been called just outside the box there. Well, that wasn't a whistle either for the foul for a free kick in what would have been a dangerous spot. It was just the throw in, and so now here comes Pascarella. One player change of field, Pascarella sprinting up the near sideline. Now in no hurry with two minutes to go. Dangles it down towards the corner. Sets it right on the flag, forces him to push it out. Yeah, as you said, both of those, if they could have been a free kick opportunity, could have changed some things for Anoka, giving them the opportunity. But now the Bengals have this time that they can just sit with it if they're able to keep possession. They're not. It's a corner, but just 90 seconds remaining. Or excuse me, it's a goal kick, but just 90 seconds remaining. The tornadoes, well, whatever they've got now, they don't have to worry about the defensive side. Give up another goal, losing one nothing, 2 nothing doesn't matter. You have to find a way to put that pressure on. And they still have Amber Hansen within arm's length of Kendall Stadden at this point with the ball on this side of the field. We'll see if that changes, if they can change the field. I'm almost shocked that there wasn't more disgruntled fans with those lack hand, of calls yeah. that were right. Anyway. Pascarella has that one cleared. And it's going to be a corner this time. Under a minute to go. Bengals have the corner. And this is setting up to close with the one nothing win. Whatever the score closes, a Bengal win. Kendall Stadden's first 10-minute goal, seven minutes in, looking to stand up. I'm also surprised how quickly this Bengals squad took that corner kick. Yes, you don't want to take too much time, but it felt like they were rushing themselves. Big collision, no whistle. Excellent play by Katie McKay down on the deck to still kick that one ahead for Anoka. Defense pushes it out, just 15 seconds left. Great play by the Anoka coaching staff to keep that ball in quickly. Drop down by Hansen. Hansen back to the middle. Bengals need one more clear with five. Zachman was there, knocked away, big collision. That'll do it. Bengals score seven minutes in, and that one stands up with this defense the eighth time they've shut out an opponent and picked up a win this year. Kendall Stadden's 16th goal scored seven minutes in off the feed from Tessa Zachman, and the Bengals will move on, Blythe, to take on Andover. 
Stadden and the defense, and that's how the Bengals did it again. Yeah, and that was their main goal. The Tornadoes coming into this game, they wanted to shut her down. But for them, I think they can still come out of this one. They eliminated so many more goals. If she had four goals versus them last time, hey, now you only allowed her to have one. Definitely you don't want to have to go to that, that point to think that way. But it was a tremendous season for them overall. They got better, and now they proved it by just allowing this one goal versus four from Kendall Stadden. Bengals win it one nothing fifth straight time they meet Anoka in the postseason and they have beaten them for a fifth straight time in a head-to-head -head postseason matchup they'll move on to face Andover on the road on Thursday for Blythe I'm JW Cox thanks so much for joining us Bengals win it they're 12th of the year and keep playing you watched it all right here on North Metro TV